And as the House struggles to choose a leader, others in Washington are remembering the assault on the U.S. Capitol that took place two years ago today. Federal prosecutors have charged more than 950 people in connection with that attack, and a congressional investigators, congressional investigators rather, have talked to more than a thousand witnesses. Let's bring in Democratic Congresswoman Annie Custer from New Hampshire to talk more about this. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. So uh, before we talk about uh, January 6th, I just want to get your thoughts on this vote that is happening for House Speaker with the understanding that most Americans are watching what is happening on Capitol Hill and wondering, is this really how our government functions, uh, let alone members of Congress like yourself who probably have commitments to your constituents and other that are not being attended to at this moment? Absolutely true. No, this is not typical at all. And there's actually a through line here from the January 6, 2021 attack on our Capitol to this small band of, um, frankly, insurrectionists that are now attacking our democracy from the floor of the House, trying to disrupt our ability to govern, uh, to serve our constituency, and to move the country forward. And it's really a sad day at America once again, two years later. Um, well, I know that you have pointed out and others have pointed out that there are a lot of similarities. Uh, you know, Scott McFarland, one of our correspondents, said even the day looks very similar. The weather is very similar to what it was two yes. years ago on January 6th. But certainly some of those 20 holdouts have been uh, lawmakers who have been less than critical of what happened on January 6th. And, and that's, I think, being nice about it, being polite. Um, you know, it's being very polite. Some yeah. of them are actual instigators. There you go. What do you think may it, would have happened um, if we were in the current state right now, if Republicans had the majority in the House two years ago? Honestly, I can't even imagine. And for any of your viewers that's seen the video now, the film on HBO about Nancy Pelosi and what was going on behind the scenes with our leaders, um, there was terror, frankly, and, you know, you've seen the video of Mike Pence's life was in danger. Um, we've now seen security of video. When I was evacuated from the uh, balcony, the gallery of the house, it's just 30 seconds from when I ducked into an elevator to when the insurrectionists were in that very third floor hallway. And so our lives were in danger, um, our democracy was in danger, and I can't even begin to imagine if we had not had the steadfast leadership of Speaker Pelosi and others that uh, got us back into the chamber that night, and we were able to vote to uphold the results of the lawful election of President Biden and Vice President Harris. Uh, so let me ask you, Congresswoman, about how you define leadership. Uh, Kevin McCarthy wants to be the leader. He wants to be the speaker. He is the leader of the Republican majority, but he wants to be speaker of the House of Representatives. And there's been a lot of talk about showing and exemplifying leadership in contrast and comparing uh, to previous uh, House speakers. So let's just take the most recent one, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, would Nancy Pelosi have arrived uh, this week on the Hill without having secured the votes before putting her name up for House Speaker. And what is the difference in how she approached it and the way that you see Leader McCarthy approaching it? Well, one thing that's always been said about Nancy Pelosi, she knows how to count. <laughs> and I was a part of her whip team just two years ago. And I remember the dramatic weekend leading into January 3rd. Um, people might recall that she had a few recalcitrant voters. And um, in the end, uh, a couple of our members voted present and we were able to secure the majority. Um, but just conversations behind the scenes that had gone on for weeks, if not months, to secure 218 votes. That's the magic number in this building. And uh, Kevin McCarthy apparently can't count. And I think it's very clear uh, to the American people, if not yet to him, that he does not have the support of 218 members of Congress. And I think this goes way back. Um, Kevin McCarthy actually gave quite a strong speech about the events of January 6th. But then you'll recall he slithered his way down to Mar-a-Lago and he has been catering to these uh, far right extreme elements in his party ever since. And, 
you know, I look at this as a mom. If you cater to bad behavior, you will get more bad behavior. And this is what they have wrought within the Republican Party. And frankly, I think it's tragic for our country. I think our democracy runs best with two strong, rational parties. Um, so that's where we stand. Representative, to that to that point, there has been a lot of talk about the the concessions being made uh, by Kevin McCarthy to get this position and, and what else he could offer. I'm, I'm wondering if you are concerned about how effective this session of Congress will be moving forward, uh, whether it's Kevin McCarthy or someone else who manages to offer up more uh, and, win, and win the votes. It, it, it clearly looks like we have a Republican Party that is divided already. Um, are you concerned that, you know, we're moving into another se a session that will be not particularly effective because Republicans will be fighting amongst themselves and then also fighting with Democrats. Well, I have to say, first of all, let me uh, start with I'm so proud of all the progress that we made in a very united caucus, by the way, with the same four or five vote margin for the past two years. Um, but we always say on our side of the aisle, our diversity is our strength and our unity is our power. And we have stayed united. Uh, I think we are witnessing, frankly, the demise of the Republican Party as we've known it. I think we're witnessing the chaos and the turmoil within that party. And I think you're absolutely correct. Um, whoever shall emerge as speaker on their side of the aisle will be the weakest speaker historically ever. I mean, they're now down to one vote to make the motion to vacate the chair, any one of their caucus. Um, a week after they choose their speaker could move to remove their speaker. And we know, and Congresswoman, that, and we know Congresswoman, that that... That, that rule uh, is essentially what drove Speaker John Boehner out of Congress. You'll recall that uh, he was constantly in danger of, of that rule being implemented, um, and which is why it was done away with. Uh, but, but I got to ask you, Congresswoman, um, as we look at what is happening on the Hill right now, do you see a risk uh, for Democrats in that uh, now there are calls for Democrats to find a way to work with some of these moderate Republicans to elect a speaker? Uh, and some of the images that the American people have seen, bringing popcorn onto the floor, uh, sort of relishing this infighting, we get it, it's politics, but at this point, there are people saying, look, next week we're not going to be able to get uh, paid. Uh, there's a national security issue here that needs to be addressed. So at what point do uh, Democrats around Hakeem Jeffries say, look, uh, we want to be the grownups here and we have to find a way to work with the other grownups in the Republican Party to get something done? Absolutely. And those conversations are ongoing. I am the incoming chair of the of the uh, new Democrat coalition, and we are the um, hundred or so members of the Democratic caucus that are most likely to be working with responsible moderate Republicans. And I can say that those conversations are happening. And um, when the time is right, that's the coalition that could emerge. And we will responsibly move forward uh, with the Congress. All of you will still be in chamber today to vote uh, for Hakeem Jeffries. He's not going to lose a vote. Correct. All right. Yes. And, and by the way, despite, um, you know, our lives go on. One of our newest members of Congress had a tragic death in her family the day that we started these votes and she's not missed a single vote. So um, we're here. We're here to do the work of the constituency and to govern as the American people have sent us to do. And uh, we will be very responsible going forward. And look, I look forward to the resolution of this and to moving forward. We have important challenges ahead and we need to work together and uh, make this Congress work. All right, Congresswoman Annie Custer, thanks for spending time with us. Thank you so much, good to be with you.